Hey everyone! So since my last video, which was my take on Katy Perry's Dark Horse, and if you haven't seen it yet, you can click here. There's also a link in the description box below. But since that video, I've gotten several questions about how I did that sort of dip in pitch that you hear a few times throughout the song. And I've even been asked if it was some sort of studio effect that was put on after the fact. But I actually did it myself and I thought it would be fun um, to make a video to show you how to do it. First of all, this is a technique called pitch bending. And you'll often hear this associated with extended techniques. If you're not familiar with what extended techniques are, they're basically ways of producing sounds that are considered to be non-traditional. Um, things like whisper tones, bamboo tones, timbral trills, um, singing while playing, multiphonics. These are all different kinds of extended techniques and pitch bending is one of them. If you're just starting out with extended techniques, this one is probably the most basic. Um, it doesn't involve anything crazy like, uh, say, multiphonics does, where you have to worry about things like um, splitting your air so that you can produce more than one note at a time and using alternate fingerings. Um, this one is, I think, one of the more manageable extended techniques, and it's a good one to start with. So what is pitch bending? Pitch bending is basically altering a pitch without actually changing fingerings. And you would do this by either rolling the flute in or out, depending on which way you want to bend the note. And I'll get more into that in just a second. So there's a few things to think about whenever you're working on pitch bending. Um, the first thing is that this is a technique that will work with just about any note. Um, if you get into the really high registers, it gets a little iffy, but for the most part, it works on any note in any register. Another thing is that it's easier to bend a note down than it is up, and the reason for that is because there's a wider range when bending down. There's more room to actually rotate the flute before you end up covering the embouchure hole and you can't get air through the instrument and the sound totally diffuses. Another thing that kind of goes along with that is you can only bend a note so far. So don't get discouraged if you don't feel like you hear some dramatic difference from the pitch that you started on. Um, you're not ever going to get something like a full chromatic scale. It just doesn't work that way. Um, so when you're bending down, what you're most likely going to get, depending on the note that you're playing, is anywhere from about a quarter tone to a full tone um, down. And now when you're bending up, the farthest you're probably going to be able to bend it is about a quarter tone, so really not very far at all. And if you're really interested in this, um, there's a book that you could check out. It's by Robert Dick, and it's called The Other Flute. And he talks about this technique and a bunch of other extended techniques, and it's really cool. Um, and he has this handy chart in there that shows you um, pitch range and then where you're likely to bend a note within that range and it's a really good thing to be able to have and reference so that you know what you're working with. So you can actually practice this technique just like you would anything else. Now like I said before, whenever you want to bend a pitch down, you would roll the flute in and when you want to bend it up, you roll out. Something to think about while you're actually playing is when you're bending down, Think about pulling the jaw and the lips more back. And what I really mean is to just allow this area to relax. And um, when you do that, uh, it will help to really pull the pitch down as you're rotating the flute inward. And uh, also think about aiming your air as far down into the embouchure hole as possible. And that will also help to pull the pitch down. And likewise, whenever you're bending up, Think about pushing the jaw and the lips more forward and also aiming your air very, very high towards the back of the, um, of the embouchure hole and that will help pull the pitch up. So an exercise that you can do to um, practice this um, is just to sustain a note and um, start to slowly rotate the flute in or out depending on which way you're bending. Um, so in, it's important to make sure that you have a tuner that's going to be very helpful. Um, so let's just say we're going to start on A, A in the middle of the staff. And what you want to do is play your A and make sure with your tuner that you are in tune and also make sure that it sounds nice. 
and then slowly start to rotate the flute inward. And um, the, the idea here is to make the, um, the rate at which you, the pitch drops as even and steady as possible. Um, so when you do that, it sounds something like this. So let me flute, start on A, make sure it sounds good. Okay, there we go. So in this case, I was able to bend the A a whole step down to G. Now, something that you could play around with whenever you're working on bending up is to maybe start from a more rolled in playing position. That way you can have a little bit of a wider range when you're bending upward. To practice bending up, you're just going to repeat the same process, only this time you're going to roll the flute out. And remember to think about pushing the jaw and the lips more forward and also aiming your airstream very high. And don't forget also that the range is much narrower when you bend up. So probably you're only going to get about a quarter tone um, higher. So start on A again, the same A, and then start to roll out. Like I said before, this technique works on just about any note and a good way to get it into your practice is to just incorporate it into things that you work on regularly like scales. So I hope that this helped answer some questions about this technique. I really hope that you give it a try. If you do, I would love to hear how it goes for you. So be sure to leave me a comment or send me a message. Also, I have new videos coming out very soon. So make sure you subscribe so you know when those come out. And until then, thank you so much for watching.